Okay, here's a video on how to fix the buttons in your Bose remote RC18S2. This has got fewer buttons than the larger remote. It's also got um, a, a plastic snap dome layer inside I'm going to show you. This isn't the typical rubber keypad with the, with the conductive rubber pills. Uh, to fix the, the buttons, I have a Buttonworks keypad membrane repair, uh, Q-tips, uh, isopropyl alcohol, and a small Phillips small flat screwdriver. So first step is to take that screw out of the bottom. This is the only screw you have to deal with. Now to get the unit apart, there's no prying involved, right? What I'm going to do is put the flat screwdriver, just set it right down in the groove between the two sides of the housing, and I'm going to slide it up, and the snaps will come out from the... This is basically wedging them apart. If it's... You can get up to a point where it's kind of really hard to push and stuck. You should be able to push down right here with a little bit of pressure. Um, again, I'll come up and it's, it's stiff, and I'll push down. And one more, there we go. Now the same thing on the other side, but this will be easier now because the other half is already gone. Okay, oops, I pushed this down. There we go. Now I'm, there's one snap left. I'm just gonna, up here, I'm just gonna wiggle it like this. And there we go. Now this, um, keypad is not a standard rubber keypad. It's got another plastic layer with uh, their little domes with conductive silver paint. These last longer than the, than the older style rubber keypads, but when they do fail, um, they might fail quicker and they might, uh, little flecks of silver might come off and get stuck on the board. Um, on the contacts, and if it does that, it has the potential of shorting out a button which makes the remote think you've got it held down all the time. Um, and that might stop other buttons from working because it thinks you're always pressing volume up. Now, if you're fixing your remote for button failure, it's probably either because you got a spill in there or you used a button so much that it wore out. If it wore out, you should be able to take a close look at these, these snap domes and see like lines missing, um, uh, or it just basically doesn't look as good as some of the buttons you don't, you know, hardly ever use. If that's the case, you want to make extra certain that you clean them with uh, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and a Q-tip. So say it's the volume up button. I want to go, well, there's the volume up button right there. It's actually labeled volume plus. And I'm going to really get in there and make sure I clean those good. Because the um, conductive particles might be very, very hard to see. So you want to get that really clean. Um, if uh, you have a spill damage or anything like that, you could just take a rag and wet it down with isopropyl alcohol. And then just clean the board. You want to make sure you get anything, any corrosion off. Or there are, uh, it'll just keep spreading. So now that I've got the circuit board cleaned, um, I've got this membrane, it's a peel and stick, and you can just put it down and make sure you got the right one, make sure it looks good. There's uh, cutouts for these little pins, there's a cutout for this hole here in the board, and there's a couple solder tabs up here. So make sure that looks good. Now you'll notice it doesn't cover, this one doesn't cover the buttons down here. But that's because they don't actually do, there's no buttons there. They look like it on the board and there's even stuff here, but it's not used. So that's for a different model. Maybe they never even produced it. So you just peel off the paper liner, the brown paper liner. Pick a corner. And at this point you want to take it very, you know, easy. And don't rip it quick like a band-aid because it might rip and then just make it a hassle. So when I'm putting this down, I'm going to line up that hole with the board, and then there's other holes there, but the biggest one I want to worry about is that single hole, and then just line it up with the board itself. And I don't want to push down, I want to lay it down as flat as I can, and it's going to stay there now. 
I don't want it creased, bent, cupped in, or anything like that. So, also I want to say, if you do need to take the board out, because maybe there's a spill, you're going to want to clean the other side too. Um, you can just wiggle this like that, and the springs for the battery will eventually work their way out. You can do whatever you need to to clean the board. Um, inspect it, see if there's any corrosion spots. And when you put it back together, just line up those springs, the top and the bottom, in little slots. Push it in, make sure you did it right, look at it. Yep. Okay, so now the keypad is in the top housing, the rest of it's in the bottom housing. And I'm going to take this part and flip it over because it won't fall out. Just line it up and snap it back together. And there you have it. And then there's that one screw, which I seem to have lost. Oh, there it is. Now, if your remote's completely dead, like all the buttons stop failing, stop it, it suddenly, um, it could be because of a button shorted out, um, but most likely there's something else wrong with your remote and it needs repair and not a keypad. Could be the antenna's busted or one of those components is broken. Um, so, I don't recommend getting a keypad repair kit if all of your buttons stop working. Um, maybe you want to take it apart first and see, you know, is it really keypad failure or is it something else? Uh, but that's it. Thanks for watching.